Can you see her? What are you doing, Lola? It's crazy. Are you crazy? Hi, honey. Welcome back to my channel and a special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it is Friday. So it's weigh-in day. We're going to talk about my week. We're going to talk about my weigh-in, the Weight Watchers workshop topic. We're going to talk all about it. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I do a weigh-in every Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly recommend those custom personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. It's free. It's supportive. We would love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's talk about my week, my weigh-in, and the Weight Watchers workshop topic. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing week. I had a really good week. I'm in week two of being back to maintenance after my eight week cut, and I'm still loving it. I'm loving having the option of extra calories. I definitely feel a lot more energized, less hungry. That's one thing I've really noticed is that getting more calories, I actually have more energy throughout the day post my workout to get more done. So it's so it's proof that food is absolutely fuel. And the fact that we can eat more food, getting more fuel is really, really beneficial, even in weight loss, also in maintenance. So I'm feeling really good food wise. I've been really focused on getting in my protein every day. I'm actually currently drinking the Clean Simple Eats Clear Protein and Prickly Pear. Love this. It has 20 grams of protein, 90 calories. It's always sold out on the Clean Simple Eats website. I will link it for you. Sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. And the minute, and I mean the minute, it's back in stock, grab it because it sells out super quickly. It's so good. The Prickly Pear flavor, one of my favorites. I get 90 calories, 20 grams of protein. I do have a 10% off discount code for Clean Simple Eat, so I'll put it all down below for you. But when these are back in stock, definitely grab them. It's also hot, humid, and miserable here. It is monsoon season in Arizona, and July and August are my least favorite months here. It's so humid. I mean, 50% humidity is really high for us. We usually have like zero, one, two percent humidity. So it's been just gross outside, and it has been ultimately gross at boot camp. It is so humid. I am so disgustingly sweaty at boot camp that literally my hair is soaking wet. It's like I took a shower and I have to have a sweat rag to wipe my face off during my workout multiple times. I also have to wear mosquito pants because the mosquitoes come out during monsoon season. I love Arizona. I love everything about Arizona, but this is really like, this is the most miserable time of year here. I hate it. Thank God it only lasts a couple of months or less. It depends on the monsoon monsoon season, but right now it's disgusting here. So I've been staying inside a lot. I will say I'm proud of myself. I've been getting in all my workouts. I've been going to boot camp three days a week. I've been walking to the gym, doing my train while workout, walking home. Nothing is stopping me. Hashtag consistency. I'm still doing my workouts. I'm just miserable. Miserable when the workout is outside. But like I said, it's short lived here in Arizona and I love living here. It's just this time of year is just really my, my least favorite. I don't ever see myself living in a humid climate. It just is something that really, no, I couldn't do it. Hope you had a really amazing 4th of July. I didn't do anything. I actually let off a few sparklers in my backyard that I had left over from last year. Troy and I barbecued uh, burgers for the 4th of July. It was pretty low key. And to be fully honest and transparent, I was asleep long before any darkness or fireworks were happening. We actually have a big fireworks show here in my community. It's not something that we go to, especially because we don't have children and there's always a lot of kids, it's very busy. And we can actually see the fireworks from our front yard that they let off in our community. Like I said, I wasn't awake for that, but Troy was, and he said that he could see the fireworks. The reason I also went to bed at my normal time on the 4th of July is because I went to boot camp this morning. And so I had to get up at 4 a.m. to go work out. And I didn't want staying up late to hinder my workout. For me, my boot camp, my workouts are the most important thing to me. And I also like being on a sleep schedule. It helps me definitely have my sleep be more regulated. And I just get better sleep overall when I stick to a sleep schedule. So my 4th of July was uneventful. <laughs> Let me know down below how your 4th of July was. And overall, I 
just had a, I had a good week. I had a really good week. I'm actually headed to Spokane here in a few weeks for my 30 year high school reunion. So there's a lot of fun things happening in the month of July. So that's really exciting. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. I still haven't decided what I'm going to wear. I don't know what I'm going to wear. I assume it's going to be hot there. So it'll be something that is great for warmer weather. I plan on seeing some friends while I'm there. I would love to go to a Jazzercise workout. I need to actually send a message to my old Jazzercise, the owner of my old Jazzercise studio. I'm going to be spending time with my mom. I'm going to see some, like I said, friends and family. It's going to be a very packed short trip. I fly in on a Wednesday and I don't get there till almost 9 p.m. and I fly home Saturday morning. So it is, like I said, a short trip. It'll be very fun, very eventful. I just don't wanna be away from Lola very long. She's, by the way, doing absolutely amazing. As time goes on, she gets more and more upset when I'm gone, especially at night when it's dark outside. I think it's because she sleeps with me every night and we cuddle on the bed and watch TV together in the evening. I think that that's just something that's become a habit for her. So Troy said when I'm gone in the evening, it, it's hard on her. So I just don't need to be gone away from her any longer. And I'm still going to have an amazing reunion. So of course I'll share everything with you. It's a, towards the end of July that I head to Spokane. So I at least have something exciting to look forward to. Before I share my weigh-in for the week, let's talk about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic. And I actually really like this topic. And that is how to actually, actually being the keyword, achieve your goals. The closer we get to actually achieving something, the more likely we are to do it. So when we set out on a weight loss journey, this is 100% myself. When you have a lot of weight to lose like I did, you have to have smaller goals along the way because saying I'm going to lose 100 pounds, a few months into that, you're going to be, your motivation is going to really, really lack and you may not continue on your weight loss journey. So it's important to set realistic goals and even small goals that lead to the big goal in the end. Basically, having goal posts, so to speak. So think about it like this. Let's say your goal is to do 50 push-ups. Does that feel impossible? I don't know why. Maybe it's because the number's daunting and you'll, you're convinced it'll take forever to achieve or you don't even know where to start. Instead of focusing on all of those push-ups, create a smaller goal that's closer to where you are right now. Work toward that. Five push-ups should be way more palatable. And then did you achieve your goal? Chances are you're feeling pretty positive and more likely to keep going. Think of the next step on your ultimate path. How does five more push-ups this month sound? Again, creating those smaller goals that lead to those larger goals. So maybe you focus on five pound weight loss or weight decades, getting into the next weight decade that ultimately will lead you to your goal weight. So let's dive just a little bit deeper. The definition of the goal gradient effect is the closer we get to a goal, the harder we'll try to achieve it. The further we are from the goal, the less motivated we are. So let's look at coffee cards. You know, I uh, love me some coffee. This card, we have two coffee drinks out of the eight that we need to get a free coffee. So we might go, I don't really feel like getting coffee. But when we're closer to the goal and there's only one coffee stamp left, we say we're more motivated. I'm going to go grab a coffee. No matter what the goal is, filling out the coffee punch card, mastering the push-ups, reaching your weight loss goal, it can be really discouraging and unmotivating if the end goal seems so far away. That's why it's important to build goal posts along the way. Things that are achievable in the short term that, like I said, once you achieve all these little short term goals, it leads to the end result, the long term goal. Breaking down goals into smaller steps doesn't just keep you motivated. It helps you more be more confident in the goal. It builds momentum to push you forward and to keep going. So if you have a big end result goal, break that into smaller goal posts, move those goal posts along the way, and eventually you'll reach that big goal. And the great news is you'll do it without even thinking because you're so focused on those smaller, more achievable goals. I really like this topic. This is exactly what I did when I set out to lose my 140 pounds. I focused on weight decades. Every time I got in to a new weight decade, it was a big celebration for me. So from 290 to 280 to 270 and so forth, breaking them down, setting goals, using goal posts is really truly the way to do it to reach that long-term goal eventually. Let me know down below, what is your big goal, your long-term goal, and what are your small goals that you're setting to reach that long-term goal? Let me know down in the comments. Speaking of goals, let's talk about my weigh-in. Now, like I mentioned, I'm back to maintenance, which means that I'm eating at least 2,000 calories every day up to 
about 2,500 calories per day. This is my calorie goal. Your calorie goal is going to be different. If you want to know what your calorie macro goal is for weight loss and maintenance, that's where I come in. Purchase those personalized macros and calories on my nutrition coaching website. That's what I did. I calculated my own to know what you're reaching for every day. So for me, my goal ultimately is to pretty much maintain my weight. If I have a weight fluctuation, either up or down, totally normal, totally fine with me. As of today, I'm just a few days out from starting my cycle. So I can see my weight fluctuate a little bit more, just basically based on hormones. And when I stepped on the scale this morning, I'm actually up a little bit in weight, 0.4. I'm up 0.4 pounds. To me, that's a maintenance. Maintenance is a range, not a number. I have a 10 pound range that I stay in for maintenance. And I know that weight fluctuation is totally normal. And really 0.4 is nothing. A 0.4 gain, a 0.4 loss, like I said, I consider that maintenance. So I'm really proud of myself, especially because I am getting closer to starting my cycle. I'm pretty sore from all of my workouts. They've been a lot more challenging in the humidity and in this kind of weird weather that we have here in Arizona. So I'm really happy with a 0.4 gain. To me, again, I'm considering that a maintenance. And we'll see what next week brings. I'll actually most likely be, yes, I will be on my cycle next week. So that'll be an interesting way in. Uh, along with your long-term and short-term goals, let me know how your week was. Did you gain? Did you lose? What are you doing over the weekend? What did you do for the 4th of July? Fill me in down below. And if you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because again, I do a weigh-in every Friday and I upload five videos every single week. Again, the description box will have nutrition coaching, get your macros and calories done so you know what to do to lose and maintain your weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want to talk with me directly, if you need support, accountability, I am here for you. Discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Happy Friday, friends. Have an amazing, amazing weekend and I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.